Hello everyone! How many of you know anything about games called Rebel Star or Laser Squad? Well, if you owned Sinclair ZX Spectrum back in 80s, the chance that you played at least one of those games is quite high. I still remember how impressed I was by Laser Squad, how much time I spent playing it with my friend. All those games are predecessors of XCOM series and were made by the same developer, Julian Golop. In some aspects, Laser Squad was even more advanced than XCOM, which is crazy. I recently finished playing the last game developed by Julian Golub called Phoenix Point and it reminded me greatly of original XCOM, including already familiar Geoscape. There are things that I don't like much or even miss from original XCOM, especially ability to chase UFOs all over the place and shoot them down. But hopefully future DLCs can bring in some interesting new features and especially more types of enemies. After all, there are planned 5 DLCs this year. In case if you want to learn more about the games that forged XCOM franchise, then check out a video called From Laser Squad to Phoenix Point, the evolution of game genre with Julian Golop from EGX 2017. All links you can find in the description of this video, but I find it quite interesting how turn-based strategy games slowly but surely are climbing back. Of course, it will never reach its former glory, but it's not needed. And it's clear that there is huge market for these kind of games. I remember very well good old days when turn-based strategy games ruled the gaming universe with games like King's Bounty, Warlords, Heroes of Might and Magic, Civilization, XCOM, Master of Orion, to name the very few. Of course, mostly that was due to technical constraints of PCs in 90s, but same time those games are probably the closest thing to chess and will require players to rely more on their brain cells than reaction time, which is great in my opinion. I still call VGA Planets a space chess game. Man, that game was insane and I wasted so many hours on my turns that none of modern games can even come close. If you want to kill what's left of your social life, go and play VGA Planets. But back to first Rebel Star game, it was released in 1984 and was called Rebel Star Raiders. It contained three scenarios and was made for two players only, no AI followed by Rebel Star 1 and 2 that came out several years later. Now players had an option to play with AI or with a friend. Line of Fire was introduced as well as inventory management, grenades and environmental destruction, which we all love so much. What I find extremely interesting is that Rebel Star 2 was heavily influenced by my all-time favorite movie, Aliens. And this is when aliens appeared for the first time. Alien creatures hatching eggs and acid spitting aliens. I never played any Rebel Star game as I got my Sinclair ZX Spectrum in 1988 and one of the first games that I played like crazy back then was Laser Squad. That game was groundbreaking at the time, nothing came even close. I remember playing it every day with my friend as Laser Squad featured hot seat option and what really stuck with me is those chuckling noises that my friend made during his turns while he tried to outsmart me, gee. That game quickly could become adrenalizing. Sometimes plants still freak me out in games as you could hide grenades there. And what could be more exciting than this, hiding your grenades in plant plots? First, games that I've played that had field of view, so basically you could see nobodies and turn around and boom, there are three freaking enemies. Enemies according to line of sight just add so much to the game. Also different armor values for your soldiers, managing your squad one by one. Chain reaction explosions. Throwing and even catching, I mean catching, come on, which modern game allows you to catch anything? Multiple shot variations like auto, snap and aim shots and also for the very first time I've seen overwatch option. Encumbrance, morale and stamina. From nowadays gamers perspective it all sounds like a given. But more than 30 years ago, 1988, it was a mind blowing experience. Especially if you played with one of your friends. And then, after Julian failed to find publisher for Laser Squad 2, which already was in a simple demo state, Microprose UK suggested to make a different game, not just tactical combat sim. Publisher wanted also a tech tree, UFOs and other things like building, manufacturing. Remember, at that time Civilization was a huge hit, so it seemed appropriate to add game mechanics that gamers already knew and loved, basically stealing best ideas from other games. 
and XCOM franchise was born. Well, technically the first, very first XCOM released in 1994 was called UFO Enemy Unknown, but it's also known as XCOM UFO Defense, so I will use the term XCOM. In this game, players could upgrade their base, research new tech, manufacture all items and vehicles and fight enemies not only on Battlescape, which was tactical sim, but also in real-time Geoscape. Hunt those flying saucers and shoot them down. After that, players could land and kill or capture aliens, bring back alien technology. I spent so many sleepless nights playing XCOM, way too many nights. But that game had great replay value. Same as most games in 90s. Now developers want to make games to be short and force players out of playing their games as quickly as possible. Sadly, and not surprising at all, that rebooted XCOM games by Firaxis were really bad in my opinion. Tactical side was still there, but Geoscape was missing and the game basically became a linear adventure that was played as tactical ground combat sim. I finished XCOM Enemy Within in 3 days. Original XCOM I've played for many many months and this one took me 3 freaking days to complete on second hardest difficulty level in my first playthrough. I remember how disappointed I was about that. To me it felt like a total money grab. What's even worse, replay value was non-existent for XCOM Enemy Within as well due to linear storyline. I'm really glad that Phoenix Point was developed by the same guy that made Rebel Star, Laser Squad and original XCOM games, Julian Golob, as it reminded me why I spent so much time playing original XCOM games and why open world and random points of interest add so much to replay value. I'm looking forward to see what his next game will be and I'm pretty sure that there will be one. If you love original XCOM games, you should check out Xenonauts, especially because this year will be released Xenonauts 2. Also, this year should be released some more sequels to several great old games, one being King's Bounty. And another, one of my childhood favorites, Settlers. Now someone, please, make a Heroes of Might and Magic sequel and we can really say that turn-based strategy games are back in 2020. Thanks and see you soon.